sequestered in the blackness of the dreaded Tower of High Sorcery in Palanthus, and surrounded by nameless creatures of evil. Archmage Raceland Majir weaves a plan to conquer the darkness to bring it under his control. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's Time of the Twins. Time of the Twins is a 1986 um, novel and first in a sequel series to the Dragonlance Chronicles um, called The Legends Trilogy, uh, of course written by uh, Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. I have done reviews for the uh, three original Dragonlance Chronicles, um, Dragons of Autumn Twilight being the first one. Uh, I did those over a year ago, so it has been a while actually since I read those, but not terribly long. So. I did not enjoy that series as much as I would have liked the first book being my favorites. Uh, in this case, I actually like Time of Twins better than that first book. So that is a good sign, but let's talk about the book a little bit. So the story starts with Betram of the Aesthetics in Palantis going to visit Astinus. Uh, Astinus, of course, being the guy who seemingly has lived forever and records all history constantly. He, knows, he seems to know just about everything. Anyways, he goes to inform him um, that Crisania of Tyrrhenius, a cleric of Paladine, or Paladine, has arrived. Asinus already um, knows she is there, of course, not to meet with him, but with Raceland Majir. He simply is there to mediate. Uh, Raceland, however, has not left the tower since he entered two years before at the end of the War of the Lance. Uh, then chapter one takes us to Tika, who was married to Karaman Majir, now Raceland, or well, Raceland's twin brother. She is running the inn of the last home. She seems to be suffering p from some sort of PTSD from the war, but also um, from experiences with Karaman, who has uh, become a drunk. So Tannis and Riverwind are coming to visit, and this is all a nice callback to the start of Dragon's Vod and Twilight. Um, I really missed Flint Fireforged, a uh, very obvious uh, absence there. Uh, and Karaman was not really a character I was a fan of, but he's kind of sunk lower here, and I felt for him more than ever. Uh, and it was pity rather than like disgust, than say with like Wolfgar's descent into alcoholism uh, in The Legend of Drist, if you've read that. Um, you know, I was pretty critical of the Chronicles as a whole. I felt the atmosphere established early on was very cozy, and I felt myself wanting to read more in the world, um, regardless, though. Um, besides the first three, I've only ever actually read Beyond the Moons before this, um, I which I forgot. It's a Spelljammer novel, but it's technically set on Kryn, which is the planet Dragonlance is set on. Um, and it's pretty interesting, though, because our main character is really Karaman. Uh, we do get a little bit of Tasselhoff, of course, uh, and Crisania, and some of Raislin. Uh, but it's interesting with Karaman, we get things that are dealing with, uh, like, uh, being overweight and uh, tough love and alcoholism. <laughs> it's a little refreshing. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, Kinder. Uh, a little bit of gully dwarves are present as well. Uh, neither of those things are my favorites. Uh, I do like Kinder more than gully dwarves. Um, just, I think they just overdo their stay a lot. Uh, they're not bad in, in short amounts or small amounts. And so uh, they're a little too whimsical for my liking. Um, Hasselhoff is okay though, um, and I think he actually does a good job playing his part here. Um, and there is uh, the twins' half sister, Kitiara, the Dragon Lord. Um, she's got to be around 40 at this point now. Uh, she's not in the story all that much, and Lord Soth makes a cameo as well. Um, and another character, a new one, uh, one that I believe is rather important to the Dragonlance as a setting, is Dalimar. He's a Dark Elf apprentice to Raceland. Um, Dark Elf here is not Drow. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if there's any drow of that sort in Dragonlance. Uh, I know there are in Greyhawk and Forgotten Realms. Uh, but it's more of like a ale from the Silmarillion. <laughs> if you've read that, uh, he is from Sylvanesti originally. Um, and, well, obvious Tolkien inspiration there. Dragonlance is obviously full of Tolkien inspiration. Uh, but we do have some instances of poetry, which I always appreciate. It's not particularly well formed, but it's pleasant nonetheless. Uh, and this Raceland is supposedly this great evil, but he seems largely just out for himself, uh, which is pretty interesting because I don't know if that's done on purpose. Like everyone thinks he's like evil and then he's like kind of in the middle. He's like gray and I feel like it's very obvious though. 
I think he is con- rather convincing. <laughs> um, and I think the authors did a good job making him relatable and sane, um, you know, as opposed to like a maniacal uh, wizard or an evil madman or something. Um, so it was rather refreshing in that sense. And I started liking him more than I liked him in the original Dragonlance Chronicles, which I just, where I thought he was just kind of okay. Um, his compassion from book one of that series is kind of brought to light here, and it was actually um, emotional and redeeming. Um, it's also finally cool to see some of the mages from the Conclave besides Raceland. Um, in the Chronicles, there's Fizban, but he's a god's avatar, and it's a little different. There's also some cool stuff in here that I can't spoil. Uh, but I will say that second half is quite a treat and very different um, from the typical fare of epic fantasy from that I'd expect from Dragonlance. Um, it deals a lot with faith and hubris. And while it's rather simply done, I think it's it works well enough. Um, I think Crisania has a great introduction, but is rather one-dimensional afterwards. Um, I wish she had more of her point of view. Um, that wasn't just some confusing thoughts as always. Uh, a little disappointed with her as a character, especially since she's really the main female character we get in this book, um, and one of the authors is a female, uh, so I don't know what's going on there, but this book does definitely end on a cliffhanger, and this is, again, first of a trilogy, the Legends trilogy, um, and so that is, I think The War of the Twins is book two, and then The Test of the Twins is book three, so I will be reading those at some point, but just suffice it to say that I enjoyed this, I enjoyed it more than any books in the Dragonlance Chronicles, and I was rather critical of those. So this didn't keep my attention as much as I would have liked, but it was still fun and good. So anyways, this has been Liam Williams Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.